Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville. I'm going to start with a sporting metaphor. If you're into sports, this will make sense. If you're not really, well, sorry. Um, most of us, if you're into sports, particularly team sports, you'll follow a team. Um, and you, they're the ones that you really want to win. But there'll be another team or two that, for whatever reason... They're not yours, but you'd like to see them do well. Could be a newcomer who is trying to win their first championship. Maybe an old team that was once great, hasn't won anything for decades, and you'd like to see something come through for their supporters. For me, that's Bremont. I'm, I don't follow them closely. They're not someone I'm desperately trying to collect. But I do kind of cheer them on. They are a brand I'd like to do well. So when a new watch is coming out, I hold my breath and I hope that this is the one that's going to bring it home. They've just released the new Longitude. Thus, I've been sort of waiting to see what this is like. Here's my hot take on that. Now, before I go on, this is a hot take. It is not a critique. It is not a review. I haven't held the watch in my hand and in the metal, on the wrist, everything I'm about to say could change. Be aware of that. But this is the internet and this is what we do. Share opinions when we're still trying to gather facts. Okay, so I've done a whole video about my relationship with Bremont. They're a brand that's almost been designed for me. I love my cases and things that are designed with. That's absolutely Bremont. They are very military inspired. They work closely with a lot of air forces. They're very aviation focused. I'm an aeronautical engineer in the air force. So again, kind of almost designed for me. I think though that's kind of the problem. When I look at Rep Bremont, I can sort of see the strings being pulled just a little too plainly. Now, I get it. This is capitalism. They're going to have to be a bit performative. There's, there has to be some contrivance behind those stories in the 21st century. But it just seems just a little too obvious with Bremont. So while I totally get why other people are into them, I totally understand why some people are really passionate about them. For me, I just can't quite get there. Anyway, despite all that, I still haven't quite got there. And I'm hoping one day that there'll be a watch that just grabs me and drags me in. So when the new Longitude came out, I held my breath, hoped for the best. And then I sighed because, and I'll cut to the chase, I'll do the bad bit first. I don't particularly like this watch. I'm going to start with the bits I don't like, and then I'm going to finish with the bit I do because I just want to finish on a high. Okay, so let's start with the bit I don't like the most. I don't like the watch. I don't like the design. I don't like how it's put together. I look at this watch and I feel like they had a brainstorming session saying, we're coming up with a new watch, we're coming up with a new movement, what can we do? Oh, we can have a big date, we can have a small seconds, we can have a separate minute track, we can have a big globe stamped into it, we can have a big you know, a Roman numeral 12 replicating what we see on these old chronometers. And they threw all of that up and then they edited none of it. <laughs> they just put everything into the watch. And it just... It looks a mess. Now, I've handled a lot of uh, Bremonts over the years that they've been around, and I know it's going to be well-made. I know it's going to be well-crafted, but you can well-craft and you can make a mess as well as you want, but at the end of the day, what you have is a well-made, well-crafted mess. And that's what this watch feels to me. I don't know where I'm supposed to look. I don't know what I'm supposed to appreciate. It just needed editing. And, and to be honest, that's something I see with a lot of Bremont watches. The best ones, like the Supermarine series, I feel like an editor got into that and really pared it back. With too many Bremonts, I feel like they fell in love with all of their own good ideas and didn't know when to stop putting good ideas into the watch. And that's how I feel with this one. Visually, I just can't get there. It just doesn't feel resolved and thought through. There's too much. Each part of it is okay. 
But this is one of those cases where, in some cases, we talk about a watch being more the sum of, more than the sum of their parts. The design, the aesthetics of this watch are less than the sum of their parts. They needed to get rid of some of those ideas. I don't know which ones, but I know this watch is overburdened with ideas and thoughts and concepts and, and things that it's trying to do. And it kind of just can't do any of them well as a result. The next thing I really don't like is the price. Bremonts have never been cheap and their limited editions have always been, quite frankly, expensive. And that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, they've tried to back that up with some kind of sort of by sticking something else famous into it, a bit of a desk, a bit of a plane, a bit of um, a, a rocket, you know, whatever they've been able to get, they've tried to melt it down, recut it, put it in this watch and add some exclusivity. So I'm not really, it's, for me, it's not about whether there's value or not. That's not the issue. The reason why I'm not, a, why I think the price here is a fail is because, let's go back to what it, you know, where Bremont is kind of suffering from. It's suffering from feeling a little contrived. It's suffering from feeling like it's pushing a little bit too much. Their pricing strategy does tend to add to that miss, that, miss, that, that aura of being just a little bit dodgy. The, the English brothers are just a little bit too much like chances trying to dupe us somehow. This price just feels a little bit like it's putting a distance between Bremont and the people that Bremont would see themselves appealing to. So it, for me, it's, a, it's not a, like I'll, I'll reinforce, this is not a value thing. It's, it's more a case of, I just don't think it's a successful marketing strategy. Now, before I say that, some of you are going to respond by saying, Pete, what are you talking about? This watch will sell out. Yes, it will. My problem with the price on this watch isn't how it affects this particular watch. It's rather how it affects how the world, the, the watch community sees Bremont. I think Bremont sees that coming out, you know, coming out of the gates hot with a 20,000 Australian dollar plus series of watches elevates them. I fear that actually what it does is diminishes them. It makes them look like they're, again, they're, they're trying too hard. They're trying to be something that they're not yet. And that, as I said before, puts a distance between us and them. And for that reason, I think the pricing was a mistake. Okay, so I want to finish on a high, finish talking about the good, and that's what I'm going to do. And that is the movement. I think this new movement that Bremont have put into the longitude is fantastic. And it, and it, it is a great step forward for Bremont. I just wish it had gone into a watch I enjoyed more and was priced better. But we'll deal with that. We've already dealt with that. I think this movement is both an excellent movement and also a really smart move by Bremont. I get really, really worried when I hear of small brands developing whole new movements. I think that is really high risk for both the company and for the consumer. I think it's frankly a dumb idea. And as a buyer, I would never want to be part of that. Much rather what uh, what Bremont have done here, sensibly reach into a third party, get that base, and then modify it in ways that make sense, which, are, which is really what Bremont's done here. The base movement is a great starting point. Decent specs, it looks good. It's reasonably solid and reliable. It's been around a little bit. Um, so we've got, it's going to be shared with some other, the base will probably end up being used by some other people, which gives us a larger mass to draw upon. And also the movement is decently small and flexible. So whereas, for example, Tudor's original movement is really big and they had to develop a whole second one um, to allow a watch like the, uh, the Black Bay 58. This movement is much more accommodating. It can go in big watches, small watches, thick watches, thin watches. So a really clever place to start. 
Secondly, Bremont have made some really smart choices about how to modify that movement and then make it truly their own. Starting with something that is both really significant but also doable, so just coming up with a whole new plate, is smart. Automatically, a lot of that movement becomes yours purely by making that big solid chunk of metal. Smart move. Also, not super technical, so the risk is low. Combining that by quite careful decisions about making modifications to the balance bridge and the escapement, again, these ones are smaller and they are very technical, but they're also quite doable. They're quite contained. So Bremont, by choosing what they're going to change in this movement, and there is a, I know there's a raft of other minor changes, but they're the headlines. By Bremont being quite smart about making these very strategic changes, they maintain the balance of a good, solid, well-known architecture that we that is known to work, whilst at the same time making it truly their own and unlike any other version of that watch. I read in an article somewhere that Bremont has said that this watch, uh, as modified and assembled and tested by them, will go into watches, when they're in full production, will go into watches as cheap, as affordable, however language you want to use, as 5,000 uh, US dollars. I think that is brilliant. That is right in the middle of Bremont's zone. I wish they had come out with that now. I think that watch, a watch at five-ish thousand dollars with this movement would have been exactly what Bremont really needed. When I spoke about the pricing before and how the current pricing of the longitude kind of puts a distance between Bremont and their audience, I think if they'd taken this movement and put it in a $5,000 watch, they would have done the opposite. They would have dragged the audience to them. Finally, I know that a lot of people are not going to be happy with Bremont calling this their movement. They're not going to, they're going to argue about in-house versus manufacture. They're going to hark back to, you know, the, the Le Jeu Perret, I think it was, controversy of a few years ago. And they're going to demand nothing more than Bremont essentially making a whole watch themselves. I'm glad Bremont have not tried to make those people happy. I think that if they had, they would be risking the entire existence of the company. And I think that would just simply be a dumb idea. And I do wonder if the people who are demanding that of Bremont also know that and secretly want Bremont to fail. They want Bremont to shoot for the undoable so that they fail and go out of business. And I don't. I quite like what they do. I want to see them succeed. I'm not demanding that they achieve everything at once. I think this movement is a really smart choice. I just think they put it the, the wrong watch. Anyway, um, that's my hot take on this watch. What do you think? Put it in the comments below and I'll see you later. Bye.